but it's important to, to ask a number of questions. Who's, you know, who are the actors? That may or may not, that, that may sound like a, like a very simple question, but I think in some contexts it's actually quite complex because certain actors may not wish to be visible, they may be playing a role in the making of trade-offs, um, you know, um, the, the role of the um, uh, petroleum industry in the U.S. in the debate about Anwar, you know, has it played a key role, for instance. Uh, um, <clears throat> um, we use a number of, of terms, and, and, and I won't go into this right now, um, agency being one, which is, who are the actors, but not just actors that are brought there by explicit processes of stakeholder involvement, but other kinds of actors, again, who may not be quite so uh, obvious, uh, playing such an obvious role. Um, <clears throat> some of this work is premised on the idea that the very act of simplifying, as one might see in aggregational approaches, economistic approaches, has a certain power. If you do an analysis, if you're trying to decide what to do in Papua, let's say, um, uh, and you do an analysis that lumps together, you know, a whole sort of district, um, that in itself, this perspective would tell you, is, is, a, is a form of power, because you're writing out a lot of simplicity, you're, you're simplifying reality through your model, through your analysis, and that's important to take account of. Um, <clears throat> um, distribution of knowledge, legitimacy, um, how do different, all the different actors at the table frame the issue? <clears throat> um, and what power relations are most important? So this is where, again, we think that this framework can be useful in, uh, in, in analyzing particular case studies. And one of the things that I'm interested in, um, uh, and one of the reasons I've been here in uh, Indonesia now, is talking to people from various conservation organizations to see about the potential of applying this framework to the Coral Triangle Initiative. Um, and we've also had some discussion about applying it to the Heart Borneo Initiative. Um, but this is, again, this is the part where we really need to go. We've got these three lenses, uh, we're still working to develop them, but there's the then what question. Um, we've, uh, this is really an oversimplification, but in some of the case studies we've done, we've seen these trade-offs between jobs and income, quality of life, economic development versus biodiversity, ecosystem services, and so forth. Um, um, we recognize particular valuation gaps. We particular recognize particular process gaps, and we recognize particular. These again come out of our case studies from our country partners. Um, power gaps. Um, all right, that's the big question, and that's where we're at. Um, um, so in some cases, we, we, we also use this idea of the gap. Um, we think that the gap can be narrow, um, and this really maps on to the, to the valuation approach, for payment for ecosystem services or various other kinds of incentive-based approaches. Um, uh, through process, that second lens, you can bridge the gap if you, if you get the right people um, at the table. Or you can simply mine the gap. Um, um, and uh, <clears throat> taking seriously that bridging and narrowing may not be possible in some contexts. Um, all right, um, let me, let me um, now, that's, so that's the framework. Let me now switch back to CICR um, <clears throat> and talk about uh, a little bit of what we've done and where we're going and where we think that this framework might apply. Um, <clears throat> and I should say that this framework has been emerging you know, through the ACSC process. At the same time, we've developed um, individual research projects that at the time you know, weren't part of this. It, it's, not, it's not been a neat process. It's been really messy. And so we developed these research projects, um, uh, you know, and then the framework was coming together over here. And now we're also in the process of kind of saying, OK, what does all this have to do? We have a meeting next month in which we're going to say, what do all these different pieces have to do with the framework? Um, and so let me just sort of share with you briefly a couple of the things that we at the center uh, have particularly been doing. We, uh, first of all, last October in Barcelona was the World Conservation Congress, and we organized um, an event ethnography of that 
meeting. We brought together about 20 researchers uh, <coughs> focused on particular aspects on, on, on payment for environmental services, um, on indigenous issues, on marine issues, and so forth. And the idea was, um, and I, I first, uh, I, I went to the uh, World uh, Parks Congress in 2003, there were like 8,000 people there or something, and I was a lone anthropologist, I was completely lost. Uh, you know, meanwhile, CI was there with 90 people coming together every day, sharing, you know, notes, strategically placing themselves in different panels and different, different meetings, coming back together, you know, every day, and they sort of approached the meeting like a meeting part to come together, come together and go we kind of wanted to build on that strategy as a research strategy so that we all went out every day, um, <coughs> collected our data, came back, shared our findings, and we're now in the process of putting that together and sharing that, sharing those results with IUCN. Um, we've got a project underway <coughs> with our Peruvian colleagues on what we're calling the politics of translation. One of my Peruvian colleagues, as he put it, he said, you know, all these terms, governance, and biodiversity, said, they begin in the North as debate, and they land in the South as mandate. Um, and that's a little bit of, you know, that, I think that captures an important reality. I also think it's a slight oversimplification, but, but it captures something very important. And what we're trying to do is understand how these terms circulate, <clears throat> how they land, in particular in Peru. Um, what we're hoping to do is develop a framework that would be applicable to, <clears throat> you know, uh, English, Bahasa Indonesia, or um, you know, even even when conservation terms, development terms, are translated, say, between Spanish and Quechua, or between um, um, uh, you know between Bahasa Indonesia and Cantu or Kenya or something like that, right? Um, that there is something going on that it's important to pay attention to in translation, um, and we really became aware of this when our Peruvian colleague said at one of our very first meetings, they said, wait a minute, wait a minute, we don't know how to translate this term trade-offs into Spanish. We have six different terms we could use. And the Vietnamese said, actually, we're having the same problem. For us, the concept of trade-offs, the only word we can come, or the only idea we can come up with is to, uh, in, that we can express in Vietnamese is when you have to compromise from a position of weakness. And that said something very powerful about, about you know, these concepts. We think they translate easily and of course, it's too weak, right? And, 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 and it's important to take that seriously. Um, <clears throat> I have a graduate student who's um, doing a, his dissertation on the WWF Arctic Initiative, uh, <coughs> um, trying to um, map the different trade-offs that are um, being uh, uh, negotiated and carried out through that initiative. And finally, I've got a, a postdoc working on the role of the social sciences in conservation, and what she's particularly interested in is the shift toward market-based mechanisms in conservation. And uh, so that, for instance, you know, we have all this sort of red payment for environmental services. A lot of that's being developed by economists who aren't aware of the fact that back in the 80s and 90s, we had tons of debates about what a community is. And um, and you know, all this stuff that came came through the sort of participatory and community-based management literature that's directly relevant to how one would think about, you know, benefits um, in, in the context of, of, of environmental services. Um, <clears throat> this is the kind of thing that I think there's a lot of potential. 